Well, to learn more about why some museums don't buy insurance, I spoke to Christopher Marinello, CEO of Art Recovery International. And I began by asking him how the term priceless is defined. Well, we don't put a monetary value on priceless. I mean, a portrait of your mother hanging in your home would be priceless to you. Uh, the jewels that were stolen from the Dresden Museum uh, were originally valued at almost $1 billion, but I think that was a bit of an exaggeration. These pieces were priceless to the people of Saxony and their cultural heritage. Now, it's interesting because a lot of people were surprised to learn that priceless jewels, the ones that were stolen from Dresden in Germany, weren't insured. Now, is this common industry practice? It is when it comes to state-owned museums. Uh, when you're dealing with private individuals or a private museum or art dealers, they tend to have insurance in place. It's not unusual at all. So how would one, if you're a private institution, insure something like that? How would you put a price technically on something that's considered priceless? Well, the insurance industry has been around for quite a long time, and the underwriters certainly know how to write insurance policies for the most important and valuable items. I mean, at some point they were, you know, uh, uh, insuring um, Judy Garland's legs, for example. So insurance can be had for almost everything. Now, it's interesting. You have about 30 years of experience, over 30 years, in negotiating title disputes between museums, collectors, dealers, and insurance companies. How much have things changed over the years in terms of the sort of protection that these collections get? Well, times have changed, and art thefts have gotten a lot more violent and dangerous. If you've seen the video of the Dresden theft, it's really quite horrific seeing these guys hack away at the uh, glass and then grabbing anything and everything they possibly can. Uh, we're seeing more weapons being used in art thefts today. The, um, the Hollywood romance of a suave, debonair art thief quietly walking out with a briefcase is, is pure fiction. Now, you, you mentioned some of the ways that this is characterized, especially in, in Hollywood films. But what, in reality, are the types of people who tend to commit these types of crimes? The same kind of people commit these crimes as, as the ones who would steal a wallet from you or your purse. Uh, they are just common thugs. And clearly, because these items are so uncommon, it's not the sort of thing you can just sort of go into a, a pawn shop and just sell off without drawing attention. So when some of these items are stolen, what usually happens to them? Well, of course, they. when it comes to fine art, they first try to sell it on the open marketplace. Um, with the jewelry, it's a lot more uh, difficult to sell, and especially one that's been so wi widely publicized as this theft. Once they realize they can't sell the pieces as intact pieces, they will break up the jewelry, melt down the gold, and try to move it along that way. Sometimes the objects will trade in the underworld at, at maybe 5% of their true value. Uh, they're often traded for guns or drugs, or sometimes used as a get-out-of-jail-free card, where a criminal will hold on to some items And one day, if he's ever arrested, he'll approach the police and say, hey, look, charge me with a lesser crime because I know where the Dresden jewels are and I can get them back for you. In terms of the items that are actually recovered after they've been uh, looted or stolen, what are some examples? What, what share of these items tend to be recovered? Well, I would say of the objects we recover, very few are jewels that are kept intact. If a piece is signed, like a Cartier or a Patek Philippe watch, uh, we've recovered some diamond tiaras that remained intact. Um, but unsigned pieces like these will tend to be broken up and diamonds recut, jewelry, uh, uh, rubies reused elsewhere, and they'll try to sell it. And just quickly, we know that there was a second robbery um, in Germany, this time in Berlin. What sort of recourse is there for either people or governments um, who really lend their items to some of these museums, knowing that they could potentially never recover them if something happens to them? Museums are a repository of 
cultural heritage and knowledge. People donate objects to museums. They're not going to do that if they don't think that their collections are going to be safe. It's up to the state to preserve these objects and make the public confident that they are not going to be stolen.